Hey everybody, what I've got here is a dollar store survival bag. That's right, everything here came from a dollar store, and we're going to check it out right now on Kitbashed Survival. Yeah, so I recently went to my local dollar store and I built this survival bag using only stuff from that dollar store. No cheating, everything here came from that one dollar store. This is somewhere between a get home bag and a bug out bag. Probably good for three days, maybe four or five if you had to. Now for those of you in other countries, if you don't know what a dollar store is, it's basically a store you can go to and everything is very inexpensive. It used to be that almost everything in the store cost one dollar. Now with inflation, everything is a dollar twenty-five. And some items, some nicer items might be five dollars or something. But for the most part, everything is a dollar twenty-five. So the total amount that I spent making this bag was $97. But keep in mind that a lot of stuff that went in here came from something that I bought in bulk. So for example, you know, I put a few tea light candles in here. Well, you can't go to the dollar store and buy three tea light candles. You have to buy a pack of 20 and then take the three out and put it in here. So if I was making multiples of this kit, I could probably get the unit price per kit down because a lot of the stuff I bought, there's enough of it to go into multiple kits. Anyway, I'm gonna show you everything in here and then at the end, I'm gonna make a couple recommendations of non-dollar store items that you could add to this kit to make it a lot better. So first up, we've got the backpack. This came from the dollar store and it cost $5 and it's what you'd expect out of a $5 backpack. You know, the stitching's not great, the zippers are not high quality. As an example of the quality of this bag, there used to be a loop here where you could pick up the bag, and I picked up the bag and the loop tore off. <laughs> so there's your quality for you. So this bag will work, but I wouldn't count on it to take much abuse. We'll talk more about this at the end of the video. The bag has a single mesh pouch on this side, and I was able to find a one liter bottle of water at the dollar store to put in that pouch. On this zipper for the front pouch, I've got this little guy. This was sold as something that you put on your dog's collar, and it's a light. It's got a solid, a fast flash, and then a slow flash. And I thought, well, this would be good as a signaling device to have on the pack, so there it is. And then we've got the front pouch itself, so let's see what's in there. All right, I've got a couple large black garbage bags. There they are. Oh, let's see. I've got a spoon. That'll come in handy later. Got a small flashlight or torch. And then I've got a tech bag here. So let's see. Got a little wall wart for plugging in the USB to charge your phone, just in case you have access to a socket with power. Then I've got a power bank here. This is 1500 milliamps, so not huge, but it's better than nothing. Then I've got a lightning cable for my phone and a micro USB cable to charge the power bank if I can. All right, what else we got? A pack of tissues, Spider-Man. <laughs> and that's it for the front pouch. Now we'll get into the main pouch. All right, first up. Got a pair of work gloves. These will help prevent blisters and also keep you warm if need be. Got a pair of sunglasses for eye protection. Here's the first bit of food. This is some Spanish rice. Got a roll of TP. Nice big roll too. You could break that down if you needed to make room for other stuff, but I just left it as a whole roll for now. Then we've got this bag, and believe it or not, this survival kit bag was at the dollar store, and I made it into the first aid kit. Or it's got most of the first aid gear. So we've got some Q-tips, some cotton balls, and some cotton pads. Got some 30 SPF sunscreen and some triple antibiotic ointment. I thought about putting these in little straws to make them smaller, but in the end, I had enough space, so I just left them as is. Then I've got some medicines. Got six Benadryls and then six ibuprofens. In this bag, I've got four packs of hand sanitizer, a tube of super glue, and then 
a tube of Vaseline lip therapy. So you could use this for chapped lips or you could put it on cotton and use it to start a fire. And then I've got this bag where I've got a mask, a face mask, and a whole bunch of band-aids. There they are. And then the last item is a pair of tweezers. All right, then up next I've got this big pouch, which has just a whole bunch of stuff in it. So here we've got six Melita coffee filters to filter sediment out of water. And then we've got a couple sheets of tin foil there or aluminum foil, I guess. We've got a couple empty Ziploc bags just for extra storage. Got a big spool of paracord. I think it's 50 feet. Not bad. I've got a couple first aid items here that just wouldn't fit in that first aid bag. So I've got some, some of that stretch tape here and then I've got some medical tape as well. I've got a little bell for signaling purposes. Then I've got a few of these expanding rags. They're the kind you get wet and they expand into a rag or a towel. So I've got three of those. <laughs> Wonder Woman, The Little Mermaid, and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> got some toothpaste and a toothbrush. I've got a roll of doggy poop bags. You know, these are those bags you take around to scoop up the poop for your dog when you're walking it. And I figured these would be great just for miscellaneous storage or collecting water. I've got some glow sticks. So there are four pieces. They're six inches long a piece. I guess maybe you get two reds, a white, and a blue. I don't know, but there's four of them. Got a Sharpie. A pencil. Got some dental floss. You could use this for your teeth, of course, or as emergency cordage. So I've got several pieces of paper here, six AAA batteries, and a big spool of really thick sewing thread. Got a roll of duct tape. Got a headlamp. It takes three AAA batteries. I've got a piece of paper in there to keep it from accidentally turning on, but I'll turn it on for you. Not bad. And I've got a magnification lens. It's got a little light on it, but that's not what I got it for. I just got it for the magnification in case you need to start a fire or something like that. And I've got two cutting items. I've got a box cutter that has the little blades that come out. So when a blade gets dull, you break it off and bring out a fresh blade. Not bad. And then I've got this little paring knife. There that is. It's not great, but it is sharp and it'll work. Now they did have a couple other knives at the dollar store. So here's one, it's a fake Swiss army knife and this thing is just horrible. So I would not use this under any circumstances. I mean, the scissors, <laughs> they won't even come out. I think they're broken. Yeah, the spring broke off of the scissors right away. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't even use the can opener or the bottle opener on this thing. I mean, these things are... <laughs> yeah, that's how cheap they are. You can just... <laughs> you can just break them apart without much effort. Raw! <laughs> I mean, it's just... These things are... These things are a joke. They're so bad. Yeah, I mean, just junk. They also had this knife for $1.25, and it's okay. I mean, you could put this in the kit, but the lock doesn't work sometimes. It's really flimsy. And honestly, I'd rather use the box cutter and the paring knife than this thing. So it's up to you, but I wouldn't use this or that fake Swiss Army knife. All right, then we've got this bag that has three tea light candles in it. Got a couple straws, plastic straws. Thought those might come in handy. I've got six zip ties, and they're pretty good size too. I've got two little spools of wire. I figured this could be used for all sorts of stuff. All right, then I've got this thing. It's a manicure set, 
but I added a few things to it. I think I combined the manicure set with a sewing set. So it's got a little pair of scissors there. Just a little metal thing. Got a little tape measure, why not? <laughs> Let's see what else is in here. So several safety pins, there's a nail clipper. I like this big curved needle here. That could be used for all sorts of stuff. Got another little scissors and a couple spools of thread. Got a thimble, several sewing needles, straight ones. A few straight pins, a few buttons. Some of this stuff you don't really need, but it was all in there anyway. So I decided to just leave it in there and might as well have it. I mean, like the tape measure isn't really necessary, but it was in there. Just leave it. This is kind of a cool needle too. It's kind of at an angle. I think those big curved needles came out of a weave set that they had. But yeah, all sorts of good stuff in there. And then I've got a fire bag. So there's a box of matches. Strike on box matches, 32 count. Got three balls of cotton, and there's also those balls of cotton that were in the first aid kit. And you've also got that Vaseline chapstick. You could put that on the cotton and use it as an accelerant. I've got a few feet of jute twine. Got a big lighter, and I've got a little zip tie around it so that it won't accidentally release the gas while it's in the bag. And then I've got a pencil sharpener. And of course you can use it to sharpen the pencil and that'll give you some wood shavings, or you could shave a stick with it to get wood shavings to light a fire. And that's everything in this bag. All right, now we got <laughs> a lightweight drop cloth. I got this to use as shelter if necessary. It's not going to be great shelter. It's only 0.7 mils thick, but it is 9 by 12, so it's better than nothing. They didn't have tents or tarps or anything like that there, so this will have to do. And then I've got some more clothing down here. So I've got a pair of socks. And then this is kind of a bandana head covering thing. Kind of cool. And then the last thing I've got is this pot where I've got a bunch of stuff stored in there. I secured the lid on with some duct tape. So let me pull that up. Obviously the pot can be used to cook food or more importantly, boil water to purify the water. So we've got a couple of Cliff Bars, crunchy peanut butter and chocolate chip. Then I've got a couple of these Hydramate, hydration support electrolyte drink mix. So this will help keep you hydrated. We've got a bag of butterscotch candies. This is some sugar. Got a couple packs of Double mint bubble gum. Got a pack of Imperial Nuts Protein Blend. Peanuts, black raisins, almonds, pepitas, which are like sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, cashews, and dried sweetened cherries. Oh, there's a third cliff bar. Forgot about that. Chocolate chip. Then I've got a can of basically spam, celebrity luncheon loaf, product of Denmark. This is good until like 2025. It's got a little key on the bottom. And I actually bought two of these so I could try one. And it's, it's not bad. It's not as good as Spam, but it's okay. Here's the handle for the pot. So that can screw on that way if you need it. And then lastly, I've got three little glass jars of instant coffee. So each glass jar will make a nice cup of coffee. So there's three of those. Not bad. Now, the instant coffee that was available at the dollar store, it's pretty rot gut instant coffee, but it does have caffeine, so there you go. Okay, so I was just about to film the wrap up for this video, and then something in my head said, you know, something's missing, something's not right. So behind the camera right now, there's a big bin full of stuff that I got at the dollar store, and it's stuff that I unpacked and narrowed down to get everything in this bag and get the $97 cost to make it. And there were two items included in that $97 that I forgot to put in the bag. So the first item was a cup. This was a 16 ounce cup that they sold at the dollar store. It was actually a two pack. 16 ounces is about 
475 mil, somewhere in there. I thought it would be too big to fit in this bag, so I cut it down so that now it holds 8 ounces, or about 235 mils. And so I'll add that to the bag. And then also a signal mirror. So this is a mirror. It's got an adhesive pad on the back, and it's designed to attach to a smartphone. So it folds out like that. There's the mirror. It's got some protective film on it right now, but you can peel it off when it's time to use it. And I kind of like that. It protects the mirror, and it's also got the adhesive, so you could stick it on something if you wanted to. And of course, you could use that for signaling or just to get a good look at yourself. So the mirror is going to go in that green toiletry bag that I showed you earlier. There it is. So I'll just stick it in there. And then the cup will just go here at the top. Like that. And there we go. So there you have it. That's everything in the Dollar Store Survival Bag. Some of the stuff in there might not be the best quality, but it is possible to build a survival bag at a local dollar store. Now, in terms of upgrades you could make to this kit, well, you could go down a rabbit hole and start upgrading all sorts of stuff in this bag, but that would make it more expensive and kind of defeat the purpose of it being a budget-friendly survival bag. So I'm just going to suggest two relatively inexpensive non-dollar store upgrades that you could make to this bag to make it a whole lot better. So first and foremost, I would upgrade the bag itself. This is a very cheap, low-quality bag. It's not going to stand up to abuse for very long. If you go on Amazon, you can get survival-type backpacks for anywhere from $25 to $50, and any one of those will be infinitely better than this bag. And then the second non-dollar store upgrade I would suggest would be adding some water filtration to this kit. As it stands right now with this bag, there's only one way to purify water, and that is to boil it in the pot, which takes time. You gotta build the fire and bring it up to a boil, and then you gotta let it boil for the right amount of time to kill all the bacteria and viruses. And then after that, unless you enjoy drinking boiling hot water, you gotta let it cool down. So what I would suggest doing is spending about $30 and getting a water filter like this. This is a Sawyer Mini. You can also get the full Sawyer Squeeze. They're both about $30. And this will greatly improve the water situation of this bag. And what's nice about the Squeeze and the Mini is that the threads here will fit on the threads for the one liter water bottle. So once you've consumed all the clean water out of that one liter water bottle, you can use it to collect dirty water, then attach the Squeeze, and you've got clean water coming out on the other side. And so with those two upgrades, the bag and the water filter, that's going to make this survival bag way better than it is now. Now, you could also upgrade the knife situation and the shelter situation, sure. But like I said, that's going to add to the price and make it more expensive. And again, the goal is to have a budget-friendly bag. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbashed Survival. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.